some uh, a certain individual uh, has climbed outside of the BBC broadcasting house and he spent a few hours destroying a certain sculpture. Now, I know some of you might be aware of this sculpture, uh, but some of you might not. Uh, the sculpture was created by a man called Eric Gill, and it hangs right outside of the BBC offices. Uh, the statue portrays a man grabbing a hold of a naked child, which, you know, there's a lot of, you know, like, old paintings and stuff like that and old statues that display such a thing. It's usually trying to convey some message, which you would probably think at a first glance, you know, there's a lot of, like, naked kids and naked people in, like, old, you know, European cultural art. Uh, however, Eric Gill was a known raging paedophile and a zoophile as well, apparently. That's something that's came out and all. Uh, so, yeah, people were... Um, People were uh, quite upset, especially after the whole uh, Jimmy Savile debacle happened at the BBC as well, and it turns out the BBC covered for him, ain't life grand? Uh, a protester has been brought to safety after he was spotted at height using a hammer to attack a controversial statue created by known paedophile Eric Gill on the outside of the BBC's broadcasting house in central London. And also, the BBC were like fully aware of it. Everyone talks about it. Oh, Removing statues. We need to remove statues that have a horrible history. I mean, I think I think that one is definitely qualified. But the BBC knew about Eric Gill. They knew about his history. They knew about his past. And when people came up and went, "Yeah, that now that now that we know what the what the creator of that statue uh, believed in, uh, that that's just plain creepy now. Uh, that's a man grabbing a child. Get rid of it." The BBC refused. They left the statue up. I mean, if I commissioned something like that and then someone came up and went, uh, man, man that made that statue is a raging nonce, by the way, I would have went out there with a hammer and chisel myself and went, nope, nope, that's not, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, that is not hanging on my building, goodbye. But the BBC instead fought it and uh, kept the statue. Uh, the statue, Prospero and Ariel, was made by artist Eric Gill, and campaigners have asked for it to be removed since it was revealed that decades after his death in 1940 that Gill sexually abused his two eldest daughters. His 1933 statue, which is inspired by Shakespeare's play The Tempest, occupies a prominent position at the entrance to the BBC's broadcasting house in Portland Place, London, and is an integral part of the Grade 2 listed building. As in, see as you walk into the entrance, that's the statue that's looking down at you. It's like the centrepiece like, of the building as you walk in. Uh, photos showed the protester wearing a Reservoir Dogs t-shirt, hammering away at the statue, removing large parts of stone from it while police say they continue to try and engage with them. Uh, Met Police officers and the London Fire Brigade used an elevated platform to bring the man to safety after more than four hours. Once on the ground, pictures show that he was detained by the police. Which, I don't understand. In fact, there's the video there. Yeah. So you can see at the bottom there, that's the big main entrance to the building. And there, there it is, that's the statue that's looming over you. And you can see the, you know, the statues, yeah, yeah. Uh, a spokesman for the force said he was checked by London Ambulance Service and then of, uh, arrested for suspicion of criminal damage and then taken into custody. The property owners are examining any damage to the statue and the building. Oh, it's too damaged, I think it may be a risk now. Just going to have to remove it. Uh, they confirmed that the road closures had been lifted. The incident comes just a week after a jury cleared four people of criminal damage over pulling down the statue of slave trader, trader Edward Colston in Bristol. Yes, that is correct. I was actually going to get into that. I was, I was wondering if this article was going to mention that. Yes, uh, criminal damage and destroying a uh, property that represents something with a very, very bad history of doing very, very bad things is now legal. You're now completely allowed to do it. That is that is what can only be taken from the Colston Four, which means any statues of Marx or Lenin or communism or socialism or uh, government buildings. I'm, I'm not saying you should. I'm definitely, I'm definitely, I'm definitely not saying you should. But... That's what that trial kind of said. So this man will no doubt be let completely off the hook and he will be freed. I can't wait for Banksy to fucking bankroll him. Yeah, I'm, I'm certain that Banksy is 100% going to rally behind this guy. I, I, I look, really look forward to seeing Banksy rallying behind this guy and helping him out and doing a big fundraiser. 
the verdict sparked debate over the criminality and ethics of vandalizing statues. And yeah, you can see the statue better there. And yeah, like, see, see if you don't know the history, you can look at that and just go, okay, that's just some classical art because a lot of classical art is like that where you've got all like naked cherubs, like pure, like in fucking like trees and all that shit. They're like old European art, there's shit tons of that. That's all over the place. <laughs> But then, when, but then, when you, once you know the history of the artist that uh, made the statue, that's when you're like, oh, "All right, okay, yeah, now, now it's now it's just fucking creepy. Now it's just really creepy." But yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, look at it; it's the fucking centerpiece. And, like that's that is what it's looking like. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's almost like as you're walking into the building, the BBC's trying to tell you, "Guess what we do in here." <laughs> Yeah, it turns out for a few years, yeah, they did. <laughs> but, hold on, you can see graffiti here. I don't know if you can see it on the screen because it's quite small. Um, he's wrote all pedos. Uh, and then on the hand of the statue, he's wrote time to go, which is good. Uh, BBC pedos and propaganda. I look at him like defiantly looking up at them and there's big like, big chunks missing out the statue. I think he was trying to chisel it for the back so that he could knock the entire fucking thing down. And I hope I hope it bloody happens. I hope it does. They need to get rid of that. Now ah, there's footage of him there like hammering away at the statue. Uh, earlier tonight the man said that the statue should be taken should have been taken down in the past. If this happened decades ago, I wouldn't be here, would I? He told the negotiator. <laughs> Uh, the point, uh, the Metropolitan Police said officers were called around 4.15 to uh, broadcast studio Westminster when a man had used a ladder to reach the 10 foot tall figures above the door. Uh, officers cordoned off the entrance to the building and London Ambulance Service <coughs> pardon me, and London Ambulance Service uh, were called to the scene. This, the format for this page is completely screwed up. Yeah, it's completely screwed up. Uh, a spokesperson for the Met said uh, officers attended uh, and remain on scene, uh, attempting to engage with the man. Another man has been arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to commit criminal damage. Uh, the sculpture depicting Prospero Ontario from Shakespeare's play The Tempest was installed in 1933, according to the BBC. Uh, Prospero, Ariel's master, stands 10 feet tall and is depicting, uh, depicted as sending Ariel out to the world. Ariel is the spirit of the air, was felt to be an appropriate symbol for the new mystery of broadcasting, the BBC says on its website. Is he smoking a fag? <laughs> it's... <laughs> Man's just sitting there. <laughs> His reservoir dog shot just destroyed the statue made by a nonce. He's just smoking a fag with the handcuffs on. That's fucking missed. <laughs> now, oh, there's just chunks of the statue lying everywhere. Um... It adds, after the formatting for this is so bad, that uh, concerns were voiced about the size of the Sprite's genitalia. A uh, question was tabled in the House of Commons, but the popular story that, that Gill was ordered to modify the statue was not substantiated. Uh, it is a number of Gill sculptures at the BBC. Oh yeah, there's quite a few of them. I forgot about that. It turns out there's a few. Uh, the sewer can be found in the reception area, while he also contributed to bass release of Ariel in the building as well. The BBC describes the sewer as the statue made of English marble. Uh, it stands more than 2.6 metres tall in a niche by the doors uh, leading to the artist's lobby and studios. Oh, isn't that nice? Anyway, I'm not going into the rest of this, right? But that guy, yeah, I agree. We don't like pedos <laughs> of the propaganda of the BBC. Look, I'm just saying, use of all, you know, it's been established to us that we are allowed to go out there and destroy symbols, things that symbolise stuff, if they have a horrible history of doing bad things. That is the message that we've been sent by leftists. That is the message that we've been sent by the courts. And if we do it, bank, bank say, oh, uh, bankroll your uh, legal defence. So, yeah, I, I mean, this guy... He should be released immediately without charge. If this guy actually gets convicted, then it would be selective prosecution. It'd be selective prosecution. I mean, you can't send a message to the general population saying, hey, this is okay, by the way. In fact, shit tons of people will approve of it and then charge this guy because he did it to something that you wanted to remain. 
I mean, certain statues, I believe, they should be preserved for historical purposes, right? If people don't want a statue in their area, then they should be the ones to make the decision whether or not it's removed. But a lot of people are going out there and taking the matter them into their own hands and going out and destroying these statues. Well, I'm just saying, if it's okay for you to do it, it's okay for us to do it. 